Now what are you what are you boys doing up there? Get off the roof! Go back in the house, Lois. We're being AP physics one algebra based. Okay, ready? What's that? <laughs> Peter's up to his old shenanigans again. <laughs> I wonder if he's gonna be able to survive that. Oh, of course he will. It's a cartoon. Now the question is, would a person in real life survive this? I'm Peter Griffin and this is Shop and Cat Roof. R roof, roof shop, roof shopping cat, guys. Okay, go. Whoa! Oh! 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 Well, Peter, you look like a nasty fall there. We're, we're, we're actually students from the AP Physics One class. We'd like to analyze your fall and see if it'd be physically possible for a human in real life. Would you be willing to assist us with this? And if you help us, we can help you recover. Let's watch an instant replay, Joe. This is just like the time I was a student in AP Physics 1, Algebra based. So the final value we need to calculate is the average force exerted on Peter after the collision. To do this, there are a couple components we need to find. First, we need to quantify Peter in the shopping cart as a system. Second, we need to quantify the velocity of Peter at the end of the ramp. Third, we need to quantify Peter's velocity right before he hits the ground. Then, using all of that, we can finally calculate the average amount of newtons. Let's do this. So, the first thing we should do is quantify Peter down the ramp. So, using Peter's weight from verified character databases to be 122 kilograms, and the match of the shopping cart to be 26.76 kilograms, obtained from shoppingcartmark.com, we can find the mass of the system to be 148.76 kilograms. Then, we can use the equation acceleration equals 2d divided by t squared, find Peter's acceleration down the ramp to be 11.676 meters per second squared. Then, we can plug that into the Kinemax equation, velocity final equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Obviously, he's starting from rest, so his initial velocity is zero. But, we can multiply the acceleration value of 11.676 by the time interval to get reached the end of the ramp, which is 0.66 seconds, to get a velocity final at the end of the ramp right before freefall of 7.706 meters per second. Now, this turns into a freefall equation. Peter flies off the roof and reaches the ground. We can now use the equation V final equals velocity initial plus AT, where we substitute A for gravity, because that is the only acceleration on the system. And we can use the final velocity from the ramp as his initial velocity going into the fall. So, our equation is velocity final equals 7.706 meters per second plus 9.81 times the time interval of 0.13 seconds. Then, we can calculate the velocity final the instant before he hits the ground to be 8.482 meters per second. For now, we can use momentum to find the average force. Now, we can use his momentum divided by the time to find the average force exerted. Peter and the shop at Cards Momentum is 148.76 kilograms times 8.482 meters per second, P equals mv. Uh, the delta momentum is zero because Peter comes to a stop after the collision. And the time interval of when Peter reaches the ground to when Peter stops moving is 0.2 seconds. Using all of these variables, we can use the equation delta P divided by delta T to find the average force exerted across the 0.2 seconds. Dividing the momentum by the delta time, we can find that an average force of 6,308 newtons, 0.9, is exerted on Peter's neck across 0.2 seconds. That's the equivalent of 644 Gs, or 644 times the force of gravity. I don't know about me, but I wouldn't survive that, and I don't think Peter would either. The amount of force is such that it would break a normal person's neck. I wouldn't go ride a shopping cart off a roof if I were you, Grayson. So, if this happened in real life, I would not have survived the fall. Looks like you wouldn't, Peter. The key concept in which we used is the impulse momentum theorem and the associated corollaries. Consider this, the change in the momentum is equal, which is the impulse, is equal to the force times the time elapsed. By dividing the change in momentum or the impulse by the time, we get the force that was exerted on Peter Griffin's neck, which is a lot. The human body would not be able to survive these forces exerted on it. And we were able to find such by understanding that when Peter came off the roof initially, he had a momentum and an impulse was exerted on the system when he hit the ground on the back of his head. How am I supposed to fix my injury? There's only one thing to do now, Peter. 
Ice now, heat later. We now have plenty of evidence to assume that had this occurred in real life, Peter Griffin would not have survived. There's only one way to know, for sure.